Hi friends. Uh, in this revision class seven, we will be discussing more about water, pH, acids, and buffer. As we all know that water is the major constraint of any living organism, as because it is the elixir of life. And in a living organism, it ranges from almost 65 to 95 percentage of uh, the total uh, body mass. In that sense, in human, at least a 55 percentage of the liquid is present as intracellular fluid. And in case, if it is stagnant inside the cell mass, it will create edema kind of disease. And 8 percentage is present in the plasma, you know that how much plasma is important for a living organism as a human being also. And apart from being a physical constraint of uh, our cell and intracellular or whatever it is, it plays a major role in communication and transport. That is inter and intracellular transport. So what is present in the cell, uh, whether it is to stay inside the cell and or whether it is to move to some other cell, so everything is uh, uh, based on the transporting medium, some kind of uh, water molecule is involved in that. And apart from all these uh, facts, it is the universal solvent just because it interacts with almost everything. We should uh, brush up our memory just to uh, understand what all these uh, properties of water is all about. There are two different uh, kinds of uh, bonds existing in these molecules. The first one is primary bonds and the second is secondary bonds. Primary bonds are ionic covalent metallic bonds. Metallic bonds at present we don't want to discuss in this session. Whereas ionic bonds we all know that like uh, all ionic uh, uh, bonded molecules they form a very organized structure just like uh, the structure of sodium chloride. Still we can recollect uh, that square box kind of structure what we have drawn in uh, our ninth standard. So ionic bond is also not that much important for this session. So directly getting into covalent bonds, the strongest bond of all the primary bonds. And second one is the secondary bond. In that secondary bond also the Van der Waals forces, Van der Waals forces we, we have already discussed when we, we are discussing about the DNA structure and RNA structure and hydrogen bonds, the most important biological uh, bond is hydrogen bond just because it is existing in almost all biologically important molecules starting from DNA to protein everywhere it is there. So as a biologist we are more concerned about covalent bonds, Van der Waals forces and hydrogen bonds and these are all existing in water molecules. So that is that is the uh, funniest part. So we are not much concerned about ionic bond, we should recollect what exactly ionic bond is, just to differentiate from other bonds. The valence electrons and the orbitals, or all these things I will be discussing in another session when we are discussing about the periodic table of elements. Here what we are going to see is there are two um, elements okay so two atoms are given here in the first atom the outer orbital is having only one electron this one electron is donated to the other uh, atom okay so just by donating this uh, electron this atom is becoming a positively charged ion whereas just by taking one electron from this it is becoming a negatively charged ion so just because of its positivity and negativity, they come closer and they form a bond. And just by this electron donation, it is becoming an ionic bonding. So only by this means it is different from other uh, chemical bonds. 
The very next one is covalent bond, which we are much bothered about to know about this. Uh, here, the first one is, uh, there are two oxygen uh, atoms and reacting to form oxygen molecule, O2 is formed. What actually happens is, one electron in the outer orbital is uh, being shared with the other atom. So, these two electrons are shared between these two and not just the electrons, the outer orbit itself is also shared to a particular part, means particular portion. So just by this, uh, this covalent bonds are more closer than the other one. So the first example is between oxygen and oxygen atoms. And the second one is, this is methane. What you are seeing here is methane. Here you could see uh, shared electrons between carbon and hydrogen. And whereas this one is uh, diamond structure. So everywhere, the number of shared electrons makes it more uh, stronger. And just by that, it becomes more compact and the space between these atoms inside the compound is also uh, getting reduced. So that makes this bond as a stronger one. The secondary bonds, actually what we have discussed earlier, means the types of bonds we have discussed earlier is not exactly the bonds uh, by balance, actually. It is just by interaction. That interaction is just because of the uh, electron flux and the charge flux, electromagnetic force flux, which is being created just by the rotation of electrons in its orbits. The presence of uh, uh, such kind of uh, electron movement and uh, uh, partly created charges in part of these uh, atoms creates a dipole-dipole kind of situation and the interaction between these dipoles actually creates these kind of attraction forces. This Van der Waals force actually gives uh, liquidity to a molecule. When we have discussed about uh, uh, DNA structure, uh, I said like DNA is not a fragile structure. It is more fluid, more viscous fluid. And that is because of this Van der Waals force. So we have seen uh, covalent bond as well as Van der Waals force also. And actually, the hydrogen bond is actually not a separate bond. It is also a shared one. So water actually is made up of oxygen and hydrogen. Means one oxygen takes two hydrogen to make a water molecule. So this is what we know. And when we think of ionization of water, we think like uh, hydrogen and uh, Hydroxyl means uh, these two thing, uh, things are going out and almost everything is uh, uh, different. So means it is like what we understood is like completely dissociation of these two ions. But actually that doesn't happen. Water is not a uh, linear molecule. It is a non-linear molecule uh, just because it is having 105 degree bend at the uh, oxygen molecule. And it is positively charged, like uh, hydrogen is uh, sharing one electron with the oxygen, whereas oxygen is sharing two electrons with hydrogen, two hydrogen molecules. So here it is creating a positively charged, uh, a partially positive as well as partially negatively charged kind of uh, situation. Thereby it creates a dipole, dipole kind of interaction and force, dipole interaction, dipole forces creature. This uh, bond is almost a strong hydrogen bond uh, just by sharing the electrons. And it, it is having a dual nature also just because of its electron negativity difference between these hydrogen and oxygen molecules. That's, that's why it is a strong molecule. And the hydrogen bonds in oxygen and ni nitrogen containing molecules are very important just because all these are present in uh, biological uh, molecules, biological materials. Whereas, the interaction of a water molecule 
with the other other substances is also just by its uh, hydrogen bonds okay so when the hydrogen bonds is uh, means a hydrogen bond can interact with any other molecule thereby the solubility starts that means soaking of any material is actually just because of the interaction of hydrogen bonds this hydrogen bond in nature by itself it is not actually a bond it is just by uh, interaction of uh, these two atoms so like oxygen and the hydrogen is interacting and just by these uh, sharing of uh, electrons it is actually not donating it is sharing of electron just means it is sharing the uh, positively charged as well as negatively charged forces force fields it is sharing so it is just like a uh, temporary interaction which is a forceful interaction just because of the uh, electronegativity differences and uh, while it is uh, forming crystals the process of ice making the process of ice making actually what uh, uh, makes it uh, less denser than liquid form is while crystalline lattice is formed it forms larger holes in between these molecules just be, just because it is non linear and this property makes it less dense than the water and uh, ice floats in water this uh, floating property of uh, ice is a major important environmentally important factor just because all aquatic uh, uh, ecosystems uh, during winter they they are all covered with ice on the surface whereas the uh, surface level beneath the ice is uh, still maintained as a liquid phase this is much more important just because uh, the aquatic ecosystem contains lot of living organisms below uh, the surface level of the water so all these things are protected from cold wind just because of uh, <coughs> floating ice present on the aquatic system more than that <coughs> more than that water has high specific heat in the sense specific heat is actually the quantity of uh, heat energy required to raise 1 uh, gram of water to 1 degree centigrade that means in aquatic systems water is not just getting boiled during day time so it remains less uh, heat less warm than the uh, terrestrial surface this protects lot of living organisms in the uh, aquatic system this is much more important trait of uh, uh, water and just by this uh, the difference between the uh, cold blooded and warm blooded animals are existing and not just uh, more uh, specific heat the vaporization temperature is also vaporization energy is also high for water that means water boils early but uh, vaporization happens at a later part after taking lot of energy so just because it is having high specific heat the temperature of water is not changing to a wider extreme means wider extreme so the second most important uh, aspect is uh, its biochemical role as a solvent we said like it is a polar molecule the polar molecules normally attracts all other polar molecules in the sense they soak those polar molecules this soaking property by polar nature interaction due to the presence of hydrogen bonds makes water as solvent so there will be negative end also positive end also so the negative end attracts all cations whereas the positive end attracts all anions 
of the ionic compounds. That's the reason why it dissolves. So polar uh, substances are like uh, uh, alcohol, sugar, all kind of uh, car, uh, lesser molecular weight carbohydrates, and so many, so many dipole dipole molecules are there. So all these covalently bonded polar substances with dipole dipole interactions form the hydrophilic property. So hydrophilic property in the sense they are attracted towards water. Attracted towards water means there will be hydrogen interaction and at last it will be solved. Okay, so it becomes a solvent of that molecule. Whereas substances like fat and oils are non-polar in nature. So if it is non-polar, they are not soluble in water. They are hydrophobic in nature. Some are having both these properties like uh, part of that uh, uh, molecule is uh, uh, hydrophilic in nature and part is hydrophobic in nature. The best example is your DNA. So inside the DNA it is hydrophobic whereas outside the DNA it is hydrophilic. And just like that there are so many other molecules of biological importance as well as industrial importance of having this kind of dual nature known as amphipathy. In the sense the part of this molecule is uh, having hydrophilic as well as part is hydrophobic property. Example is uh, your detergent in action. So just by its uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic nature, uh, it binds to oil and fat kind of stains in the cloth and its uh, hydrophilic uh, part interacts with the water so that it forms uh, minicules and then pulls the dirt from the cloth. So this is a kind of uh, best example for you to remember. The very next part, we are jumping out of water now is uh, to discuss hydrogen ion concentration. So the concept of pH was first uh, explained by Sorensen. In 1904, there is one more co-author for his work. And this uh, pH is a kind of uh, logarithmic scale in the sense like it gives a lower value for higher concentration. So lower the pH, that means higher the concentration of hydrogen ions. So all living systems are uh, supposed to maintain its uh, hydrogen ion concentration just because violation in pH will create a major consequence. For example, uh, acidosis and alkalinosis uh, are the difference in pH of blood. That difference is in 0.2 only. 0.2 pH change creates a disease in human or any other animal. In the case in a solution, if H plus and uh, uh, hydroxyl ion concentration is equal, then that solution is a neutral solution. In the sense, when water molecule dissociates, it forms hydronium ions as well as hydroxyl ions. Many times we write this as H plus, but actually H plus doesn't exist it forms a hydrogenium ion. So the equilibrium constant of water is the resultant of these two ionic concentrations and that is one into 10 power minus 14 at 25 degrees centigrade. Just like many other constants, this equilibrium constant of water is also affected by many factors and it gets changed when it is 37 degrees centigrade. That means the human body temperature. In pure water, the concentration of H plus at 25 is 1 into 10 power minus 7, whereas at 37 it is 1.6 into 10 power minus 7 molar. But almost in a neutral solution, both these uh, concentrations are almost equal. We know 
that in our laboratory we consider uh, in many of the laboratories we consider uh, distilled water as pure water we do have uh, molecular grade water also that is different purpose but is but for many many of our uh, research purpose we use uh, distilled water as uh, consider distilled water as pure water but actually distilled water is little bit acidic you can test to the uh, distilled water ph you take better double distilled water and test the ph of uh, double distilled water immediately after uh, distillation it will be acidic the reason behind that is just because of its uh, universal solvent nature this water actually attracts the atmospheric gases and dissolved atmospheric gases makes this uh, distilled water little bit acidic and more than that one more fact is pure water ph is 7 but if you dissolve sodium uh, chloride that is your common salt in water again the ph would be 7 that means not everything dissolved in water is uh, changing the ph and now you can correlate this with some of the soap advertisements like uh, all that is uh, neutral is not pure more than that the ph scale is an open ended scale we say like uh, it ranges from uh, uh, 0 to 14 or 1 to 14 but the thing is uh, it can exist even in negative values in the sense if you are having uh, 1 into 10 power 1 then your ph is uh, minus 1 this formula suppose you should uh, remember this uh, very uh, it is very much uh, important to remember this it is uh, negative log of uh, h plus uh, concentration so the power of or the potential of hydrogen in any solution depends on its relationship with the hydrogen ion concentration so higher the uh, concentration lower the ph lower the ph more will be its acidic nature so this you should remember easily uh, you can remember this so for many of these calculations you will uh, get some values like this like 1 into 10 power 0 is 0 1 into 10 power minus 1 is 1 and whatever whatever is there here if it is 1 and the power goes directly as a ph value the concentration is in molar so this is the shortcut to remember the uh, ph from its uh, hydrogen ion concentration no need to work out provided this part remains one and the next one is if this value changes increase in this value will uh, decline the ph see like uh, 1 into 10 power 1 is minus 1 1 into 10 is 0 10 power 0 is 0 1 into 10 power minus 1 is 1 and just like that 1.5 to uh, 5 into 10 power minus 2 is 1.8 you just retain the same value here and change this value so from 1.5 to 2.8 i have changed and the change in the value actually declines remember this point this will help you to choose uh, the best answer sometimes uh, we will get confused like increase in this value then ph will increase we will we will think like that but at least it will prevent you from making one wrong, wrong answer so just keep this point in mind this is this is a shortcut to remember just like uh, power of hydrogen uh, as ph we have uh, calculated the same thing we can calculate for hydroxyl ions also so we know that uh, this uh, um, is equal to hydrogen ion concentration in case of uh, neutral solutions 
and uh, K equilibrium constant of water is 14. And this can be equated to its logarithmic uh, value. And at last, from this, you can calculate the hydroxyl ion concentration. In the sense, uh, potential of hydroxyl ion is equal to 14 minus potential of hydrogen ion. And thereby, if you are having pH value given to you, you can find out the potential of hydroxyl ions. Just like that, from pH to uh, hydrogen ion concentration also, you can easily arrive. Just uh, reverse the formula. Uh, H plus is equal to 10 power uh, minus of pH. Okay. So you just uh, put minus and uh, pH here. You can directly calculate uh, the concentration here. Just like uh, this, you can calculate for uh, uh, OH also. So you know what is acid now. Next, we are moving to strong and weak acids. The difference between strong and weak acid is complete dissociation and incomplete dissociation. If something is dissociation in a part, that means it is partly dissociating, then it is a weak acid or weak base. Almost in every weak acid and weak base solution, it tries to uh, attain a equilibrium. In the sense, the actual compound and its uh, ions like uh, conjugate acid as well as conjugate base, everything will be in an equilibrium. If you are trying to add something more of uh, uh, either of these compounds or its uh, conjugate acid or base, definitely it will try to um, attain its equilibrium in a few minutes time. The strong acids and strong bases are actually present only in laboratories, not in biological systems. So within living cells, we cannot find anything extremely like strong acids except our stomach acid. Stomach acid is almost nearing uh, pH 1. So except that, we cannot find any uh, strong acid. And even the stomach acid, we, we don't uh, classify as a strong acid. And almost all biologically important uh, um, acids and uh, bases are uh, weak acids and weak bases only. If it is an acid, it should provide hydrogen ions. And if it is a base, it should accept a hydrogen ion. So this is a, a kind of uh, explanation provided to define these acids and bases. So actually, uh, the bases will try to uh, decrease the hydrogen ion concentration, whereas the acids will try to increase the hydrogen ion concentration. Next one is an important theory, constant lorry theory of acids and bases. They have explained about the weak acids and bases. Here it is explained as a hydrogen donor or hydrogen ion donor. H plus donor. A donor is an acid, whereas an acceptor is a base. If it is from one molecule and gets dissociated into two, the first one, actually the hydrogen donor is a conjugate acid, and the next one is a conjugate base, which can accept a hydrogen ion. And the bidirectional arrow denotes incomplete dissociation so that it is in equilibrium. So here for equilibrium for this acid, you can calculate as hydrogen ion concentration and conjugate base by conjugate acid concentration. So remember, for acid, this conjugate acid will be at the bottom. Just like that, for weak bases like ammonia, we can calculate the constant for base. So when we take a base, the conjugate base will be at the bottom. 
So that is the shortcut to remember. So next one is uh, the Henderson equation. We all know this Henderson equation. So once the pKa value is also available and this uh, uh, conjugate acid and basis uh, concentrations are available, we can directly arrive at uh, pH of a buffer. If it is not, from the values available, we have to derive it. Otherwise, uh, uh, using our bit trap technique, we have to find out the pH. The capacity of a buffer uh, depends on the strength of this uh, conjugate acid and uh, conjugate base. And it defines like to how much uh, level, means to what extent it can uh, tolerate addition of a conjugate acid or base. So that, that defines the buffer's capacity. So actually, how buffer is defined is, a weak acid with its uh, conjugate base or a weak base with its conjugate acid. So as much as time it was asked in your model test, almost more than 90% wrote this wrong. That's the reason why I have taken this class today. Thank you.